Hello guys, you're welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we're going to be looking at how we are going to be retouching this amazing image. Exactly what I did while retouching mine, that is what I'm going to be teaching you. So everything we're going to be doing today, we're going to be doing it manually, step-by-step -step guide on how we're able to achieve this amazing image. So without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. So the first thing I'm going to be doing in this one is I'm going to be taking care of the blemishes and to see the blemishes that I'm taking care of, I'm going to just quickly make use of our black and white check layer. So I'm just going to load up black and white, cross the reds down and boom, our blemishes are out there. So I'm going to make a duplicate of my background then pick up my patch tool, my sports healing brush tool and my healing brush tool, whatever that is going to help me achieve the result I want to achieve, I'm going to use it. So I'm just going to quickly fast forward this. So what I'm naturally doing is that I'm just clicking on the places I want to remove using my spot healing brush tool. So I'm just clicking on it like this. So you don't need to select the area. It does the selection for you automatically, but in case it's not doing a very nice job, you can as well pick up the next one, the healing brush tool and just make a selection and manually take care of your blemishes yourself. So whatever works for you, just stick to it. Yeah, look at those very obvious ones. Just take care of them. Okay, so move on. So I'm going to just quickly fast forward the video at this point. So I don't get you bored removing my blemishes. I believe you've gotten the idea. Okay, so I think I'm going to stick with what I have here. This is the before, this is the after. So I'm going to flatten this up here. So we'll press OK because we disabled our black and white. Now it's time for frequency separation. So how do we do that? We're going to make a duplicate of our background two times. Then we're going to name this one, which is the layer one, our low frequency, low F. Then we're going to name this one high frequency. So we'll have our high F. So it's simple. The high frequency is where your texture is and the low frequency is where your color is, where your tone is. So what do we do? We're going to hide our high frequency for now. Move over to our filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. So the idea is to just blur out the things we want to keep at the end of the day and leave the things we want to remove at the end of the day on blur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be leaving it at four so that we'll be able to get a very smooth image or even rather, let's keep it at three. Then I'll press OK, open up my high frequency, go to my image, go all the way down to apply image. So I'm going to, in the layers over here, you're going to be choosing low frequency because we want to remove the color, the texture rather, from our low frequency. Then I'm in the blending, we'll pick our subtract. So simple, it means that we are subtracting the texture. Sorry, there's something else I needed to show you. It means we are subtracting the texture from the low frequency. Now, you will notice that my scale is 2, my offset is 128. Always keep your settings at that. Then I'll press OK and change the blend mode quickly to linear light. So I'm going to put these two into a group to be sure that we got a good setting. So when you, when you put it in a group and do your before and after, and you notice that you are seeing changes in your image, then you have missed something. You have to retrace your steps back and find out exactly what you missed. Now, at this point, let's move forward. I'm going to go to my low frequency. Yeah, so in this one, we're going to be using the, uh, what is it called? The smart object tactics. The smart object tactics. There are many ways you can to your frequency separation, you can use your lasso tool, you can use your brush, which is what we're going to be using now, and you can use your mixer brush too, but in this particular one, we are using our brush. How do we use our brush? Convert your low frequency to a smart object, then go to filter, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur. So you just have to blur, be blurring the skin out until you have something very smooth. So I think I'm going to be working with this. This is good. So we have our 13.9. So let's just keep it at 14. Then I'll press OK. Then go to your smart filters. This is the reason why we converted it to a smart object. Press Ctrl I to invert the filter or the mask. Pick up your brush and just start painting over your object. 
It's as simple as that. So we'll just print over our object. Yeah. So this is a very quick tactics or technique you can use, especially when you have a whole lot of images to edit. You can just quickly make use of this tactics and be able to still give your image a very good looking frequency separation at the end of the day. Although you cannot compare the results with a mixer brush that is well done. Emphasis on mixer brush that is well done. All right. So we have this over here. All right. So come over to the body. Very simple. Move on to the next one. All right. So I think I'm beginning to touch her dress, which we don't have to do. Okay. So this is the before. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. So we have been able to do our frequency separation quickly in a very short time. So the next thing we want to quickly do is our dodging and burning. Very simple. Pick up your curves. Make a duplicate of it. So the first one, we're going to make it very bright. Press Ctrl I, then press Ctrl J and make it very dark. Just like that. So we'll just pick up our brush. This is our dodge, which is D, and this is our burn which is B. So pick up our brush, make sure your brush flow is as low as 2%. So the idea is to just make the bright places even more brighter. So I'm just going to turn off my frequency separation so I can see exactly what I'm doing. So just a very quick global dodging and burning. You do not need to spend all the time in one place. It's going to look weird. So keep it like this, keep going. Over to this area, to this area, to this area, to this area. So one thing you will notice is that I'm not spending time in any place. I'm just making the bright places look a bit more shiny. That is the idea. You have to keep it as realistic as possible. If not, it's going to look weird. Okay, so we'll move over to our bond. Or rather, I think I missed this area. Let's just make it even more brighter. Very good. So move over to our bond. Tuck in here. Tuck in here. So we'll just start darkening the opposite of the places we brightened up. Okay, so this is the before, the after of our bond. I think I need it a bit darker towards the nose area. Here as well. Here as well. Here as well. So I'm going to open up my frequency separation now. And now we have our dodge and bond done. This is the before. This is the after. Of course, I'm going to reduce that. Very good. All right. So the next thing we want to do is just to quickly make our image pop out a little. So the first thing I want to do is to brighten it up a little bit more using my hand tool, just like this. Yeah. And looking at the shadows right now, I'm beginning to notice that there is a green tint to it over here. So you're going to see, let me open up the curve so you could see what I'm talking about. There is a green tint to it over there, which I do not want in the image. So what do we do? We go to our color balance and take it out. So we'll move over to our color balance. Now you need to ask yourself, where is it located? Most of them is in the shadows. So we'll move over to our shadows. Opposite of green is magenta. So all we need to do is just introduce magenta and we are good to go. Look at it. So see the way we've been able to quickly turn our black to pure black just by putting in a very tiny bit of magenta. So these are the things you need to look at while retouching your images. You check color cast, where is it located? Is it in your highlights, in your shadows, is it in your mid-tones? That will be able to help you guide exactly where you are going to apply your color uh, correction. And so I'm going to match this up and go to my color lookups and load up the color lookup table we'll be using to color grade this image. So if you have watched this video to this point now, then you are lucky because the color lookup we're using for this particular one, you are getting it for free. So all you need to do is to click on the WhatsApp link in the description of the video and join our WhatsApp group so that you can be able to get the color lookup link directly sent to you. All right, so I'm going to load it up. 
All right, so this is it. This is the before, this is the after. But one thing you will notice is that it's everywhere, which we do not want. So all we need to do is to just target our skin. Very, very simple. So I'm just going to go to select, go to color range. Make sure that you are on your mask. Very important. Then select the skin. Go to the plus icon over here and start adding every other place. All right, so I think we are good. You can increase the fuzziness a little just to make sure you have it in every place necessary. Then press OK. Now we'll have the color grading just targeted on the skin, nowhere else. So you need to zoom in to see if there are other areas that you could apply it to as well. But I think we are good to go. So the last thing we are going to be doing on this image is to run our done for you retouch action. So I love using my done for you when I'm done retouching my image so that it helps me bring together every uh, transition that doesn't look really really given so i'm just going to click on my done for you and i'll keep it somewhere around three or four the same number we'll use for our frequency separation then press ok and once that is done you are good this is boom oh my god of course this is too much we need to reduce it so we'll keep it somewhere around let's say 30 beautiful the before the after the before the after very very subtle so i'm just going to create a snapshot so that i can see show you the image when we take it and how far we've gone so this is the image when we came into photoshop this is how much we've been able to do one more time this is the before this is the after thank you so much for watching make sure that you practice every single thing you learn and please don't forget to join that group so that you'll get access to the amazing lots used in this video if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel do make sure you subscribe and when you subscribe turn on your notification bell to get notified every single time we drop a new video until then see you on the next one